Depending on who you ask, folk punk could either be the greatest thing or the worst thing to ever happen to music. And regardless of whether or not the person you're talking to is a regular listener to punk in general, you're gonna get a lot of mixed reactions regarding the genre. Amongst the punk crowd, a lot of people seem to have a rather distasteful attitude towards this stuff. And although I like folk punk myself, I can definitely understand where some of this hate is coming from. How's it going, folks? My name is Jack Miller. I am the incredibly underqualified punk historian. And in this quick little video here, I'm gonna take a look at some of the reasons I think folk punk is looked at in such a negative light by so many punk fans, and maybe see if I can come up with some answers. But before we dive into that, if you're interested in weekly videos about punk rock, may I humbly ask that you please subscribe to my channel here if you haven't already. I'm having a lot of fun making these, and I want to make sure that all of you can keep having fun watching them. Anyways! The first thing that comes to mind in regard to punk rock's rejection of folk punk is because, well, musically it isn't really punk. Punk is known for being loud, fast, and aggressive, and let's be honest, folk punk doesn't exactly exhibit the same sense of energy and passion as its predecessor. Not to mention, in a lot of ways, the punk crowd tends to mirror the metal crowd, in that a lot of its core fan base is made up of the types of people who like rowdy music they can bang their heads and mosh to. If you really think about it, it makes sense that metal-infused genres like crossover thrash and beatdown hardcore are so much more well-received in the scene than folk punk, especially since a lot of punk fans are also fans of metal, and in many cases vice versa. Well, I'm certainly not trying to criticize folk punk by saying it isn't musically punk, given that it's played on acoustic instruments, sung at a much more relaxed level, and will often slow down for a ballad or two, it doesn't exactly capture the same level of intensity as even some of the more family-friendly sounding pop punk bands, let alone the standard for the overall genre. What folk punk is, is folk music played by punks, and there seems to be two types of people that end up as or becoming folk punk artists. In the first category, we have people like Tim Barry, Chuck Ragan, and Darius Koski, who started off in standard punk bands, but then also began writing folk music as they got older. Then and on the other hand, we have artists like AJJ, Days and Days, or Pat the Bunny, who are definitely fans of punk rock, but ended up making folk punk instead. Despite folk punk's limited popularity in the punk world, artists in the first category are usually more well-respected amongst the fan base than those in the second, even if it's only for their work with their proper punk bands in years prior. Even if some Avail fans don't like the folk music Tim Barry makes now, it doesn't change the fact that he was still the singer in Avail. These types of artists are in an almost identical situation to a band like The Weaker Thens, who aren't musically a punk band, but still have a strong following in the punk community because John Sampson was in Propagandi. Unfortunately for artists in the other category though, it doesn't always go quite as smoothly. Bands like Days and Days will often get called things like hippie music or too soft and will often be the butt of a joke for many a street punk or hardcore fan. Although they've developed a bit of a cult following amongst Leftover Crack fans, as far as punk shows go, there's still a lot more bills Leftover Crack would be a great fit for that Days and Days wouldn't. On the flip side though, folk punk definitely does appeal to an audience that standard punk rock might not. This side of the audience is, for lack of a better descriptor, made up of peace-loving hippie types that a lot of the more harder-edged punk fans may not be all that compatible with. We like what we like, and I'm certainly not trying to poke fun at anyone for their personal interests, but it's not uncommon for the grisly, beer-guzzling types that you might see at a Total Chaos or Death Before Dishonor show to not be all that friendly towards the long-haired college kids that talk about things like astrology or opening their third eye and listen to bands like The Grateful Dead. Another thing that definitely comes to mind here is that in the metal world we have the folk metal genre. Bands like Fintroll or Eluvati, who have members that play folk instruments like bagpipes or accordions, but are still very much metal bands at their core. While what we know as folk punk doesn't at all replicate this concept, there is very much a genre in the punk world that does. In the world of Celtic punk, we have the Dropkick Murphys and Flogging Molly playing the role of the two different blueprints for the genre, but these are definitely not the only bands that play this kind of music. On the more Dropkick Murphys street punk style side, we have bands like the Potato Pirates, the Real Mackenzies, and Pipes and Pints, while on the other end we've got the likes of the Mahones, Neck, and the Tossers doing the Flogging Molly style which leans a little heavier on the Celtic folk influence. Although these bands definitely have a lot of folk instruments in their music, they're all still very much punk bands at their core, and there's not a whole lot of people that'll try and tell you otherwise regardless of what they think of this particular sound. Since there's already a genre in the punk world that serves the purpose of punk folk fusion and quite honestly does it a lot better than folk punk does, does, I'd say Celtic punk might actually be the biggest thing that hurts folk punk's appeal in the eyes of the punk community. Why would someone with a mohawk and a spiked jacket or some beardo with camo shorts and a Gorilla Biscuits hoodie want to listen to a folk singer with a gravelly voice and a little punk influence when they could just listen to a straightforward punk band with a bagpiper? The only reason I can think of that they choose the former would be if they happen to also like folk music as well as punk. And while I certainly relate to that, I can't deny that I just like Celtic punk better because it's more of what I want musically. Anyways, that's just my two cents on why so many punks hate on folk punk. I want to know what you guys think. 
What are some reasons you think folk punk gets such a bad rep in the punk scene? I definitely plan on doing crash course videos for both folk punk and Celtic punk in the future, so if you're a fan of either of those genres, definitely be on the lookout for the videos. Also, before I sign off, I want to give a huge shout out to Bart and the rest of the guys from Straight Line, everyone from Forest, and Ray from EpicMerchStore.com. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for sharing my skate punk video on your Facebooks. I cannot stress enough how much that meant. That was so awesome. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.